Okay, so we're back with the Cloud Resume Challenge and in today's video, what we'll be going through is HTML and CSS. So this is number two and three, number two and three on the list, HTML and CSS. If you remember from last time, what we did before is we created an S3 bucket and we uploaded that as the infrastructure and we didn't do anything else. We didn't do anything else with that S3 bucket. So basically what we'll do in this video is we're gonna create some HTML and some CSS and we're gonna upload it to that bucket so that we can actually use that bucket as a website. However, there's a few problems with this approach. The way that we're doing CSS is a little bit uh, primitive, but we'll come back to that later. And also I'm gonna run over the ideas of HTML and CSS incredibly quickly. What we talk about here is more actually just getting those files and getting them uploaded and turning that S3 bucket into a public website. The only thing about the website as well is though is it won't be secure, so that's another step for the future, which is HTTPS. And also we'll attach a domain name in the future, but we're not going to do that today either. So yeah, basically taking those HTML CSS files, putting them into that bucket, that's what we'll be looking at today. So let's get started. Okay, so we're now into part three of the Cloud Resume Challenge, and we will be looking at the next step, which if I jump into the Cloud Resume Challenge now, we'll be looking at these two parts here. So we've got HTML and CSS, adding those into our websites. If you remember from last time, where we'd got is, if I look in S3, we had an S3 bucket, but it didn't actually do anything. If I go in there and have a look inside, we don't have any objects in there and nothing really happening. What we're gonna to do today is actually upload some HTML and some CSS into this S3 web, into this S3 bucket and use it as a website. So let's go ahead and get that going now. What I'm going to do is I've created this before is I've got a bit of extra config that I'm going to add in to my temple YAML. And here it is here. So I've got properties, access control, public feed and website configuration. So this is the new part here. Let me just, there we go, like that. What I'm gonna do is then deploy this change so, in fact, that's the same there. So I want Sam build and Sam deploy. Run that and get that going. Add in my password. And that should now be modifying my S3 bucket with those additional permissions, which is we want a public read on the access control and the website configuration with an index HTML file. So that's creating now. If I go into my properties of my S3 and scroll right down, what I see here is my static website is hosting is disabled. So what I'm hoping is once I deploy this change set, so press yes on that, that's modifying my S3 bucket. What that should do is update this S3 bucket so that it operates basically as a public website. So that's updating and shouldn't take too long. And if I go back into S3 and I refresh the page and then scroll back down, what I should see is that my website is now set up as a static website, there we go. So you've got static website hosting enabled. And interestingly as well, what I get is also this little endpoint here, so I can view my site. If I go ahead and click on that, basically what I get is a 404 not found. Now that makes sense, right? Because there isn't actually any files in this S3 bucket, or at least not yet anyway. So let's go ahead and do that as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a directory over here, new folder, and I'm gonna call that. I don't remember what I called it last time. I call this resume site. So I'm gonna go ahead over here, new directory, new folder, call it resume site, resume site. And this is where I'm gonna stick my HTML file. So I'm gonna say index.html. And in here, I'm gonna put HTML body and hello world, just like that. And what I'm going to do now is then push the HTML file into our S3 bucket. So what I'm going to do here, I've got this actual configuration here for my make file. So I'm just gonna copy this over. So previously we just had a build step of this make file and we can talk about make files in the future, but I'm just gonna paste this in. So what we've got now is two steps. We've got deploy infra and deploy site. So what I'm gonna be running now is this command, which is same as before, so vault exec my user, that's just our permissions. And then this part of the command here is the interesting bit. So we're gonna do AWS S3 sync. And what we're gonna do is sync our local resume site directory with our previously created bucket. So let me go ahead and do that. That will be me running make deploy site. And what that should do now is take that index.html file and push it into our bucket. Let's see if it did that. If I scroll back up in my bucket, go back to objects, boom. There you are, so that's just uploaded just now, index.html file. Now, what's interesting is if I go back to my properties, scroll back down and have a look at my website. So previously I had a 404, right? Let me open this up now. Ah, now I get a 403 if I refresh the 404, 403. Now, 
that's interesting. 403 basically means that we can't actually have access to it. So before it was a 404, which was basically telling us that that uh, file didn't exist, but now it's telling us that the file exists, you just can't access it. So what do we need to do in order to change that? We actually need to set some permissions on our bucket. So I've also got that prepared here as well. So I've got here what is called a bucket policy. So we're gonna go ahead and apply this bucket policy to our S3 bucket. And what that does is allow public read on all of the objects within our S3. So let me take this resource and stick it into our template YAML. And you will notice, so just ignore these squiggly lines here, but you'll notice at the end, we apply this bucket policy and we apply it to actually our bucket here. So it says my website. That's the name of the resource that we've given up here. So what that's going to do is basically allow anyone in the internet access to read this bucket, which will help fix the issue that we had before with the 403. So I'm add that bucket policy in, and now I'm going to run make deploy infra, which should then rerun our SAM build, compile our new SAM template and deploy that. And what that should do then is add a bucket policy. If I go back to S3 and if I'm quick enough, go back to permissions. So at the moment access is denied for all public. So if I click on this, uh, oh, actually, sorry. Access is public there, but we don't have a bucket policy either. So go back here, deploy the chain set, press yes. Again, here it is adding a bucket policy. So the resource we're adding is this new bucket policy. It's gonna go ahead and create that bucket policy, perform that update, and that should now be complete. If I refresh this page now, what I'm hoping to see is this bucket policy being updated. There you go. And you can see the all get object requests to my fantastic website are going to be allowed. So what happens if I go over here and refresh this 403, boom. Hello world, which is basically our HTML file from before. So that actually means that if we go back to the Cloud Resume Challenge, this option or this part of the Cloud Resume Challenge is basically done. We've got our HTML, but what about our CSS? Now, I'm gonna show you a very crude way of doing this, but we can talk a bit later about different ways of doing this. So I'm gonna go up here and add a head tag and a style tag. And what I'm gonna do is say for all paragraph elements, I'm gonna color them red, why not? So if I go ahead now and run my script so go back into my make file and i need deploy site go deploy site make deploy site what that should do is push this additional code that we've just added here for this style which should turn our paragraph tag red you know what i'm actually i'm going to do is take that over and put it into the instruction files as well so add css while that's building let me just check on my script everything is run there that should have now updated my index file. If I look back here, so that index file was updated at 4.23, which is the time now. And if I go back to my fantastic website, refresh, now my site is red. Now, this is a very crude way of applying CSS. We'll talk maybe a bit more in future about different ways that you can apply CSS in sort of more advanced and technically interesting ways, but this way works. Let me add that as HTML. Uh, but this basically works. And what we've got now already is our website. And that's exactly where your portfolio website's going to go. Uh, if you'll notice up here, we've got it's insecure. So it's an insecure site and it doesn't have a domain name because in future we'll need to add HTTPS and we'll have to add a domain name. But this is all we want to do for now. Our S3 bucket now has HTML within it and everything is deployed. Okay, so that's it. We've basically uploaded those files into our S3 bucket and now we've got our website working, even if it is just primitive and it's just showing that little bit of red text on there for now. That's all I wanted to run through today and that really concludes this video for this time. If you want me to dig into a bit more about HTML and CSS in future, I'm more than happy to do that in an upcoming video. Just let me know. Uh, but yeah, so now you have your website going. We have the infrastructure set up. We're looking good so far. See you in the next video.